This is the, the, the Analysis in Chains with Nathan Williams and Neil Kieran. <laughs> Welcome to Analysis in Chains. I'm Nathan Williams. Neil, welcome back. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Nathan. I'm still alive. I, I may not sound like it, but I'm back. I'm happy to be back and uh, talking about crypto prices. Faith and Bigora, it sounds like you had a St. Patrick's Day bash last night. Is that uh, is that the case? Um, I'm getting older, so I can't celebrate like I used to. Um, but I did, I did uh, drown the shamrock to a certain extent last night. It's uh, it's my duty, you know, wherever I am in the world. Well, it, I, it, I'm glad that you were able to enjoy the enjoy the evening. Uh, hopefully, uh, you wore a little green. And uh, today we'll talk about, uh, I guess, what's going on in the alt green market. Uh, where uh, what's going on there with uh, all of the altcoins being hyped? Yeah, we're we're back in altcoin season. It's been a while since that happened, and usually in altcoin season, it's that everything except for Bitcoin usually uh, performs better than Bitcoin. And if we were to look at dominance um, in terms of uh, crypto valuations, we're seeing that Bitcoin is drifting towards fifty percent dominance, whereas uh, at the height of the bear market, it was much stronger because Bitcoin. Uh, it's almost like uh, when things are going bad, people fly to quality. They end up buying Bitcoin as a haven against other crypto assets. But now that risk is coming back and people feel a bit more confident, they're now exchanging their Bitcoin for other cryptos and other cryptos are shooting up 20%, 30% in a day. So there's that sense of, hey, it's the summer of 2017 again. You know, Time to like put your retirement savings back in crypto. But I don't think it'll we, ever get back there. You know, <laughs> yeah. we can all hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it does have that sen- yeah. <laughs> It does have that feeling to it, but there's still this caution. Like people are still saying, Yeah, things are improving. Less people are talking about Bitcoin and other crypto going to zero. But people are saying, Hey, you know, we're we're probably uh, approaching the bottom of this. And even Tom Lee is back. Tom Lee is back on CNBC talking back from the about grave. how yeah he went off the radar when Bitcoin didn't hit twenty k at, at the end of last year, <laughs> but uh, he he uh, he expressed something that I expressed uh, one time in this podcast is that generally when the U.S. dollar weakens, Bitcoin and other crypto do well, and it, a lot of that has to do with emerging markets. So I would say that. Uh, and this is what's been predicted and it may not come to pass, but there is a lot of expectation that the US dollar will weaken from uh, for the second half of this year. So a lot of people are gearing up for that in terms of jumping back in on the crypto uh, bandwagon. That's an interesting point there, Neil, because I we've talked about this idea of the crypto scene or, and Bitcoin especially being the new gold, that it would be a hedge against traditional markets. And what we saw in practice is that that mechanism didn't exactly play out in the past. But now what you're saying, if I understand correctly, is that the the new mechanism being proposed is that as the US dollar itself weakens, the uh, like alternate currencies, I suppose, or, uh, or such as the, the euro, the won, the, um, the, the Canadian or Australian dollars, would be stronger and therefore uh, potentially in markets that are more likely to purchase crypto or Bitcoin to begin with? Yeah, it's like any basket of goods is that it actually gets cheaper because the US dollar is weakening and therefore it gets to a price that's probably more appetizing for investors. The other thing is when I talk about US dollar weakening, I'm not talking that's going to plummet like a lot of people in the crypto world believe in. It's it's just a natural cycle. And in the last two bull runs, it started off with the US dollar weakening. Now, if you look back 
in those last two bull runs, the dollar, US dollar has still been relatively strong compared to all world currencies. But during that period where it was weakening, where we saw other emerging market currencies strengthen, that's where we saw some pickup in crypto. So, you know, that in a way, it's you could say it's it's a bit like trying to read the tea leaves and say, oh, this always happens. There's always a full moon whenever there's like a, a crypto rally. But on the same time, you know, he, there is some merit to it because of the fact that when a, you know, a global currency like US dollar weakens, you know, people want to hedge and hmm. to buy alternative assets as a result. The shamrock leaves, Neil. Reading the shamrock yes. leaves. Yeah. <laughs> we are at St. Patrick's Day after all. So when we're, when we're talking about altcoins, I mean, which ones have been performing the, the most strongly? Because personally, I haven't seen a lot go into the, like the, the real token market, for example. Um, probably more along the lines of the, the, the actual coins, like the, the ones that have their own blockchain associated. I wouldn't say that there's any strict relationship between those who have been mooning and those who haven't. I would say that I would say that a lot of people just saw opportunity in a lot of altcoins that were still quite low and had low volume. So it is worth noting that Bitcoin, uh, its its trading volume is quite high relative, you know, to recent six seven months. It's it's comparable to a year ago. And so what we're probably seeing is that okay, well, Bitcoin is struggling to break above four thousand. So since that's the case. Just go to another altcoin that has low trading volume. So when you take your profits from Bitcoin, you pull it into another altcoin that has low trading volume, it naturally causes a spike and everyone else follows towards that altcoin. So there hasn't been any particular one that has been running away with it because usually when altcoins spike, it's because of some favorable news like joining Coinbase, for example. But I wouldn't say I saw uh, any relationship and I, I think it's just because altcoins, a lot of them were just valued low and people saw the opportunity to uh, buy low, sell high. I wonder if this, uh, it, it, I almost wonder if this is a traditional pump and dub scheme, that if we were to start cruising on the Discord uh, channels and the Telegram channels, if we would find some sort of coordinated effort to go into certain uh, certain low volume coins. Because, um, yeah. I mean, well, it's well, as you say, right? Like, uh, like if you have low volume, it's going to be much more sensitive to uh, price spikes. Well, like if I would look at Wax, that's one that I follow closely myself. Um, it it was trading around about three and a half cent, <laughs> quite low from the two dollar highs I had over a year ago, and it it went up approximately say a hundred percent over the, over a period of two weeks now i wouldn't see that as a as a pump and dump however one comparable blockchain to wax's engine coin i say comparable because they're trying to target the same market and do the same things and it went up i think maybe a thousand percent and a lot of that is to do with the fact that it's already on the new samsung blockchain wallet and so obviously that spiked way higher because of extremely favorable news. So favorable news does still play a big part. Mm. But Wax, I think, just went up because it was already so low and it was kind of due to go up with the rest of the market. So it really was taking off, um, like, you know, much better than other crypto. But again, I, was, I didn't really see a relationship between it and, say, I think it's crypto.com really shot off uh, really took off as well during that period so I, I i would say there were there were probably some pump and dumps if you went to like the top like i uh, sorry crypto between 200 and 300 maybe there's some pump and dumps but when you're in the top 100 it's kind of hard to do a pump and dump because trade volumes are already you know not bad hmm. Now, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out uh, going into the late spring, uh, well, the early spring uh, of this year, because we have so many people who lost money, so many people in 2018 who were just waiting for the crypto return that I could imagine this spreading into, yeah, the top 300, the top 600 uh, coins where 
where people with uh, low trading volume uh, and and who've been hodling ever since uh, ever since the bottom fell out of the market are eager to get back in to see what sort of price stability or wonkiness comes out of this. Yeah, like I'm I'm quite confident. I don't want to say bullish, but it does make sense that we should see the bottom during this year and start to see price appreciation. Because as bad as this bear market was for price valuations, and we kept saying this, there has been a lot of investment in this scene. And I think with the innovation continuing, new products coming out every few weeks, new partnerships being built, there's very little reason for a lot of crypto to go to zero at the moment. And I think during the course of the year, I think once Bitcoin and other crypto break through psychological prices, you're going to see a lot of money come back quite quickly. Now, I, I would wonder how quick it can come back because of, um, I know we saw this in Canada and some other countries, a lot of banks were barring people from buying crypto on Coinbase. So that was that made it much easier to purchase during the whole crypto bubble in 2017. But if people want to get back in, will will crypto still be as accessible? That's what I wonder, you know, if things do take off. This brings to mind an important thing that I've been reading about and learning about. Have you heard of the consumer toy consumer token offering, the CTO? No, I have not. So this is a new uh, concept that's been brought out. Uh, I, I've seen it. Uh, consensus has been talking about it a little bit in the past few weeks. Um, essentially, the concept is very similar to the ICO, where you would have an initial coin offering that individuals can play into, but it would remove the speculation aspect from the coin. So the idea is sort of untying the different roles of the coin. Um, and part of the reason that this has become a, a, a big question mark as to whether this is the future uh, is because there's been so much speculation as to which direction crypto is going to go. If everyone goes into a security token, you may end up limiting access to accredited investors only. And the whole appeal of it was that the average person can get involved. But as the average person was doing speculation, it was really open to abuse. And the and so then the question is, if you have a token that is meant to run on a system, if people are speculating on the value of that token, will people actually 